they don't all involve pigeons. In fact, none of them do. Sorry to say to my pigeon friends <laughs> that I don't have any great stories of innovation in pigeons, but monkeys will floss their teeth with their own hair or the hair of one of their friends that they're grooming hmm. or in India and in Ceylon, they jump on the heads of tourists, especially women with or men with long hair and pull out strands of hair and floss their teeth. So in the book, I give the example of the man who's first credited with creating dental floss. But we don't really know much about that story. But the story of how it is that monkeys might have invented floss or engage in flossing hmm. involves two possibilities. One, it's aversive to have food in between your teeth. So using floss gets it out. But that, there's another possibility. When you floss your teeth and dislodge some food, you get another taste of the food. So on the one hand, you may be removing something aversive. On the other hand, you may be gaining something pleasant. And how it is that you would be engaged in, in, in hairs and your mouth at the same time, well, you could imagine maybe uh, when you were eating, uh, you still had some fur on your hands and it just accidentally you happened to pass the, the strands of hair through your teeth. And so the people who studied monkeys uh, in this project suggested that it was an altogether possible explanation. And now it's spread. It, I mean, if you go to these this temple in, in India or this place in, in Ceylon, uh, dozens of monkeys are jumping on the, on the backs <laughs> of tourists, pulling out hair and, <laughs> and flossing their teeth. So once somebody figures it out, others do. But the interesting thing is just a few miles away, the monkeys elsewhere, where there aren't tourists, they don't do it. <laughs> so you can see that sometimes the innovations are somewhat localized mm. in much the same way that the Dodgers were doing the high five, yeah. but the other teams weren't, at least for a while. Mm. Wow. So there is social contagion that does go on. And that's interesting. Another area that's really interesting in the book is self-medication. Mm. So uh, to cut to the, to the point, chimpanzees, if they get sick, will often eat at, or gnaw at a root, which is very bitter. And they don't eat it. They spit it out. But the, the, the white uh, liquid inside Hmm. They'll ingest. And the next day, they're all better. <laughs> and the belief is that the, the, that the chimps have discovered that if they're ill, if they're having this uh, intestinal problem, which is caused by parasites, different parasites, <laughs> uh, that, that it kills the parasites and the chimps get much better. Now, the best part of the story, not only do the chimps do it, but the peoples the native peoples who have watched the chimps do this and they do the same thing when they get sick, mm -hmm. they gnaw on the same plants to get better. Wow. So humans are copying the chimps mm -hmm. who have figured out a way to self-medicate. Is that wow. crazy or what? Wow. It's fascinating. <sighs> now, was this done with planning and foresight? Was this done because they had gone to medical school? <laughs> I mean, come on, be real. And so we often make jokes about uh, folk medicine mm. and think it's crazy. And, and, and we want something that's, you know, we, we buy from a pharmaceutical company. But who knows? Maybe there's greater wisdom and effectiveness in some of these folk medications than we, than we know.